Let me tell you a little story. I once came back from a night out in Edinburgh to crash on my friend's couch, but it turns out I had one pint too many that night, so I totally blew chunks all over his living room carpet, then I blacked out until the following afternoon. So needless to say, when I eventually woke up, I had a pretty unpleasant situation to deal with. Not only had I thrown up on my friend's floor, but I'd also chundered directly into my shoes. With one tidal wave of alcohol-induced vomit, I'd lost my dignity, the contents of my stomach, a brand new pair of trainers, and my friend's trust and respect. So this analogy brings me neatly along to the bells. Hallelujah. No, not that kind of bells. I'm talking about the fifth and penultimate episode of the six-week train wreck that is Game of Thrones Season 8. And what a treat it was. A couple of weeks back, I said that Game of Thrones jumped the shark with its Deus Ex Aria debacle at the end of Episode 3, and if that's the case, then Episode 5 straight up murders the shark, buries it, then digs it up and rapes its bloated, decaying corpse. And trust me, I know all about that sort of thing. The Bells is the crowning indignity in a season that's gradually destroyed everything this show used to be and replaced it with dumb, gratuitous battle scenes idiotic dialogue and insane character decisions that genuinely made me question whether this season's been written by an entirely new creative team. And I use the word creative to describe Weiss and Benioff in the same way I'd use the word comedian to describe Amy Schumer. Allow me to illuminate you. So the episode picks up in Dragonstone, a few days after the confrontation at King's Landing. Danny's sad because her nothing burger of a friend Miss Andy got executed by Cersei, and Varys is worried that she's about to go mental and destroy King's Landing, so he tries to convince Jon of the danger she poses to them all. But Jon's like, nah, it'll be fine. So Danny finds out that Varys has turned against her, and she goes mental and roasts him alive with her dragon. Just take a moment to let that sink in. This is Varys I'm talking about here. The spy master. The smartest, most cunning man in Westeros. The man who even surpassed Tyrion in terms of intelligence and planning. The genius who spins plans within schemes, within strategies, allows himself to be captured and executed without so much as a whimper. No escape plan, no backup, no contingencies. He's captured, he admits to everything, and then he dies. Fuck off, show. John watches this all happen, and it's pretty clear that Danny is slowly falling victim to rage and vengeance and paranoia, but he's like, nah, it'll be fine. Then Danny explains that this is all Sansa's fault, because she let John's secret out and she knew this would happen as a result. Wow, a strong sense of entitlement and a refusal to take any responsibility for your own actions. Danny's becoming more of a millennial by the minute. Anyway, Danny's preparing a full scale attack on King's Landing the following day, which will almost certainly result in mass casualties. So Tyrion persuades her to spare the city if it surrenders to her by ringing all the church bells. And she agrees. Or does she? She also lets Tyrion know that Jamie's been captured trying to sneak past their lines because he never thought to cover up his golden hands so her troops spotted him right away. Because he's dumb now too, I guess. So Tyrion helps Jamie escape to King's Landing so he can convince Cersei to surrender, even though they both know that plan totally won't work because Cersei already sent someone to try and murder Jamie. But, ah, uh, whatever. We've got to get the pieces on the board somehow, I guess. And it's not like Weiss and Benioff could come up with something clever at this stage. So the day of the attack comes. Everyone forms up their armies, and it's time for a good old dust-off. King's Landing's heavily defended and fortified, but for some reason Cersei deploys half her army outside the walls to meet Danny's army in open combat. What the fuck? What's the point in having walls and fortifications if you're not going to use them to protect your troops? Not only are you leaving them unprotected and unsupported, but you've also made it impossible for them to retreat if they're under pressure. They pulled this exact same bullshit at the Battle of Winterfell, and it was just as ridiculous there. Has no one in this show ever bothered to learn about military tactics? Jesus, a couple of hours on Total War would have been enough. Ah, oh, whatever. So, Euron Greyjoy is on standby with the Iron Fleet when Danny suddenly attacks with her dragon. Now, remember in the last episode how they were able to kill one of her dragons mid-flight with their ballistas and force Danny to retreat with their overwhelming firepower? Well, that's not a problem anymore because, uh, the writers say it isn't. 
So she comes in like a fucking World War II dive bomber and incinerates the entire fleet in a matter of seconds, and all the ballistas suddenly lose the ability to shoot at her. Even the ones mounted on the walls of King's Landing magically stop working. Wow, that was lucky. So anyway, she blasts open the gates of King's Landing and her army charges in and overwhelms the defenders, and it made me laugh because there's Dothraki horsemen somehow leading the charge. Didn't you guys literally get wiped out to the last man at Winterfell? Ah, oh, maybe those guys were off sick that day. Cersei's watching this total annihilation of her forces with her usual outpouring of raw emotion. Wow, I'll say one thing about Lena Headey, she's certainly consistent when it comes to playing this character. Eight fucking seasons I've had to look at that same bland, half-smirking expression. Like she's just met someone really important and they've farted mid-conversation and she's not quite sure how to react. Jesus, her acting range makes Brie Larson look like Daniel Day-Lewis. So anyway, they fight their way inside and the Lannister army decides it's probably a good time to surrender and then the church bells start ringing to show that King's Landing's capitulated. Nice work, gentlemen. You've stormed the city and captured it with minimal civilian casualties. I mean, really, this whole assault couldn't have gone better. Oh god. Stop. No, really, this is too much. Oh, I think we're gonna be sick. So it turns out Danny's lost her fucking mind, just like Varys said she would. And finally John's like, nah, I guess it won't be alright after all. It's a bit late for that kind of thing, you blank-faced simpleton. So while this is all going on, Jamie's fucking around on a beach outside the city, looking for a secret passageway up to the Red Keep, when Euron swims ashore because he was wearing his plot armour when Danny destroyed his fleet. Wow, lucky he happened to wash ashore at that specific stretch of beach at that specific moment, otherwise these two characters never would have run into each other. Anyway, they have a little fight and Jamie gets wounded and then he kills Euron, but Euron's all happy because he reckons he's killed the Kingslayer because he magically knows Jamie's going to die from his wounds now. Fuck off, show. Anyway, the Hound and Arya make their way into the Red Keep, and she's getting ready to go all Deus Ex Arya on Cersei's ass, but he tells her to get lost, and so she does. Meanwhile, Cersei decides it's probably a good time to evacuate, so she heads downstairs with the mountain and a bunch of guards. Oh no, I hope a bunch of rubble doesn't collapse and totally kill everyone except the major players here. Called it. Anyway, I think you can guess what's gonna happen next. It's time for Clegane Ball, and Cersei doesn't want any of this, so she walks past and leaves them to it. I'm not kidding, she walks right past him, and because this show is now a dumb 80s action movie, the Hound just lets her go. So they go at it as the Red Keep collapses around them. The Hound's the better fighter, but the Mountain's an indestructible zombie monster, so he throws his brother around and he gouges his eyes out, and then the Hound stabs him in the head like a fucking watermelon, and tackles him through a wall and they both die. Wow, really glad I waited eight seasons for this. Meanwhile, Cersei makes it down to the crypts where Jaime shows up and tells her he loves her and he's there to save her. And for all those people who left nice comments in my previous video, like Dude, OMG, you totally don't get it, Jamie's going there to kill her, LMAO. Well, it looks like I did get it. You know why? Because I can understand basic English, you fucking bellends. And if someone says, I love Cersei and I'll do anything for her, it probably means they're not planning to kill her. Anyway, they make it to Jamie's escape tunnel, but it's all blocked up with rubble and there's no way out. Cersei says she doesn't want to die, and Jamie says that none of it matters because they have each other now. But you know what does matter, Jamie? 10,000 tons of collapsing masonry, my son. That's the dramatic irony of this scene, you see. After a lifetime of walking in and out of buildings, they ultimately get killed by one. Oh well, I guess it could have been worse. Which brings me neatly along to Arya. She gets caught up in the destruction outside, and then a building falls on her, but she's okay and she wakes up in a nearby basement sometime later. And then, without having any understanding of the situation or what's going on outside, she tells the people there that they have to leave this safe haven and go with her. So they do, and then they all get roasted. But Arya's got her plot armour on, so she's just fine. Then she finds a convenient horse and she rides away. And that's it, that's the plot of this shit stain that we call an episode. Jesus Christ, it's honestly becoming hard to review this show, because every time I think it's hit rock bottom, it finds a way to keep sinking lower. 
It's almost embarrassing now. Everything that made this show clever and special and unique and compelling is gone. Now all we have are dumb, idiotic characters caught up in overblown CGI battles that have been done so many times they've lost all meaning and impact. Watching Danny destroy King's Landing made me feel almost nothing except mild disgust because there's no weight to anything that's going on now. We're living in a world that's totally detached from everything that's been built up for the past seven seasons. Plot convenience allows Danny to overcome the defences at King's Landing, even though she and her dragon should have been killed a dozen times over. Characters do and say things that are completely contrary to their personalities because the plot demands it. People who were once smart, calculating and ruthless have become stupid and naive so they can be conveniently killed off now that the writers can't think of anything to do with them. Leaders who have been rock solid, compassionate and caring for the past seven seasons suddenly turn into murderous lunatics just because they lost a friend no one cares about. Jamie, a character who slowly matured and redeemed himself over the past seven seasons, finally ends up right back in Cersei's arms where he started, having abandoned everything he's learned and achieved absolutely nothing. What a waste. Cersei does nothing except stand and watch during the battle for King's Landing. She doesn't issue orders, she doesn't direct troops, she doesn't influence the defence of the city at all, and she gets killed by a fucking collapsing building. What a waste. Euron Greyjoy, who seemed to be an almost unstoppable warrior that always had a plan up his sleeve, suddenly becomes a useless sneering prick who dies in a lame sword fight against a one-handed man. What a waste. And yet again, Jon stands idly by while all this madness goes on around him. What the fuck is the point in this utterly neutered character who doesn't take a single decision by himself? A man who won't lift a finger to stop someone that's clearly lost their mind, even if it means sacrificing thousands of innocent lives. You know, I can pretty much predict that Arya is going to kill Danny in the final episode, and Jon will just stand there with that same gormless look on his face, waiting for someone else to tell him what to do. What a waste. And I think that word pretty much sums up the whole of Season 8. It's a complete waste of everything that's been built up to this point. All the work, all the careful plot hints and character development, all the schemes and plans and betrayals, all the battles and the hard-won victories, all the heroes and the villains, all of it's been undone by this absolute turd of a season. If the first seven seasons of Game of Thrones were a new pair of trainers sitting on a pristine carpet, then season eight is my surge of highly acidic vomit splattered all over it. And just like me all those years ago, Game of Thrones has lost the trust and respect of the very people that have stuck by it all this time. And that's all I have for today. Go away now.